big milestone makes a huge splash. I'm Brian Moore, and this is Focus NNS. We're here in downtown Newport News with Gerald R. Ford, CVN 78 as the backdrop. Shipbuilders have been testing and demonstrating the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS, being integrated on the ship. We'll take you to one very special demonstration for ship sponsor Susan Ford Bales. Plus, more good news for the carrier program, a new contract and an upcoming ceremony for Kennedy, CVN 79. Plus, delivery for John Warner, SSN 785. Those stories and more are coming up, but first on deck, a spectacular sight as the Gerald R. Ford's catapult system is put to the test. And one very special guest took an active part. Aaron Pritchett with our communications division takes us to flight deck. Practice makes perfect, as Newport News shipbuilders recently welcomed back ship sponsor Susan Ford Bales to take the lead in putting the new EMALS, or Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, on Gerald R. Ford to the test, and in doing so, helping to celebrate and inspire our shipbuilders so that they can continue doing all they can to bring the newest, most advanced aircraft carrier in the world to life. It's really remarkable. The ship itself, is, you know, it's a brand new design, brand new class, uh, brings a lot of new challenges. The ship itself, you know, it, it's, a, it's not a, just a transition, it's a leap to the future. A lot of new technologies. Catapults are just one of them, but uh, the Ford itself is just a remarkable ship. And not only do shipbuilders know that, ship sponsor Susan Ford Bales knows exactly just how special this ship is as she returned to Newport News Shipbuilding in mid-June for a chance to see firsthand the progress that has taken place aboard the ship that proudly bears her father's name. There you go. This has come a long way. Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you for your work. Her shipbuilder guided tour took her to many compartments and levels of the ship, giving her a chance to see many things, meet the shipbuilders and Navy personnel, and of course, she didn't mind pushing a few buttons just to see how things work. It's a very big day to have her here. I mean, any day, any day that she comes out here and see a ship that's named after her father is a good day for the shipyard and for us. It's an amazing feeling to see Ms. Bales come on here and, and shake our hand and and be a part of it with us. I really do think she's you know as much part of the ship as any of us. And having a sponsor that involved really is an amazing feeling. And having almost that she has our backs and that no matter what goes on, she knows that we're going to get it done. And she has that confidence in us. Okay. And that confidence was extremely high as Susan Ford Bales took part in the highly anticipated and talked about EMALS, or Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System Testing, a monumental event where large sleds on wheels, also known as dead loads, weighing between 8,000 and 80,000 pounds, are used to simulate the weight of an aircraft, which are prepped and then launched off the flight deck at 160 to 180 miles an hour, all powered by electromagnets. She was out there giving the commands to shoot the dead load. Um, she's very much into it. And like I said, one of the best sponsors I've ever seen. She kind of jumped up in the air. I think she was as excited about it as any of us. Susan told me later that day, it was a proud moment for her. And I believe that. I think that she, again, she is just so genuine and really, really appreciates all that, that we're doing you know, really in her father's namesake. Your heart is pumping out of your chest. I mean, it, it is an unbelievable feeling to know that you had a large part in making this dream come true for the Navy. I mean, this is by far one of the best warships they will ever have for years to come. The excitement level, not just from me, but from the entire team is unbelievable. To see all the people that came up and watched this, the excitement is, is beyond belief. Testing of the new EMOL system on the flight deck of the Gerald R. Ford continues. And so too does the high quality work and the great sense of pride these shipbuilders have for this great ship as they all work together towards completion and delivery to the U.S. Navy in 2016. For Focus NNS, I'm Aaron Pritchett. Back to you, Brian. Thank you, Aaron. 
And by the way, the video of the GoPro being launched off the Ford blew up on our social media sites across the nation and around the world. With over half a million views and counting, plus hundreds of shares on blogs and media sites, it's the most watched video ever produced by Newport News Shipbuilding. Pretty impressive. Now, let's take a look at some other news from around the yard. A $3.35 billion contract is awarded to Newport News Shipbuilding for the detailed design and construction of the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy CVN-79. The contract work includes ship construction and design, as well as engineering and procurement of materials. And you'll be hearing a lot more about the Kennedy. Next up, the keel-laying ceremony for the ship on August 22nd. And speaking of aircraft carriers, it's a meeting of the aircraft carrier minds as more than 300 representatives from Newport News Shipbuilding, Norfolk Naval Shipyard, and Puget Sound Naval Shipyard hold their semi-annual meeting at Bassick. The specialized group, more commonly known as Carrier Team One, met this spring to share ideas, discuss current projects, and prepare action plans for the challenges ahead in all aspects of refueling and overhaul and construction of aircraft carriers. One of the questions that is commonly asked is who is Carrier Team One? Carrier Team One is everybody, right? If you're doing any work on an aircraft carrier, you are part of Carrier Team One. We want to hear from you. We want to make sure that uh, the best practices, the things that you're doing really well are, are getting elevated up to Carrier Team One, but also the, uh, the challenges that you're facing, right? We want to know those challenges so we can attack those issues, making sure that information is pushed to the people that need it in a timely manner. So one of the things is right time, right place, right person. And the next meeting will be held this fall at the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. Newport News Shipbuilding officially breaks ground in the North Yard for the new 250,000 square foot Joint Manufacturing Assembly Facility, or JMAF. The buildings will support the construction of aircraft carriers and submarines. The first phase will open in 2017 and will feature production bays to improve construction efficiencies and working conditions for shipbuilders in aircraft carrier and Virginia class submarine programs. We aren't just breaking ground on a new facility, we're breaking the mold on how we build aircraft carriers and submarines. This state-of-the-art facility will provide the shipyard with a competitive and sustainable advantage in an industry faced with tightening defense dollars and budget cuts. This is extremely important as we look to the future of our business, our growth potential, and job sustainment. And another important point for those wondering, there will be no loss of employee parking as a result of this construction. There will be a relocation of 500 parking spaces, but that lot will be shifted before construction begins. Newport News Shipbuilding sponsors Hampton Roads Pride Fest in Norfolk. The annual event is held each June to support unity and diversity for the Hampton Roads lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. Festival goers stop by the Newport News Shipbuilding booth to learn more about shipbuilding, take a spin of the wheel for prizes, and hear about the incredible ships we build for the U.S. Navy. From Pride to Pilots, Newport News Shipbuilding continues its sponsorship of the Peninsula Pilots baseball team. Newport News Shipbuilding Night was held in June, and besides a great baseball game, there were prizes at the shipbuilding wheel and an opportunity to learn more about aircraft carriers and submarines. Get ready for round two when we have another shipbuilding night on August 1st. Well, June 25th was a big day for the Virginia class submarine program as John Warner SSN 785 was delivered to the U.S. Navy. Our guest correspondent and summer intern Casey Fletcher has the story. With five years of construction, key milestones marking its progress along the way, and extensive sea trials and testing, it's already been an amazing journey for the Virginia class submarine John Warner SSN 785. It's a special feeling, it's, it's hard to describe because there's no other place that you can work and feel these same things, especially submarines, it's, it's such a special process and to be able to see it float through the water and make its way through all of our building processes and make its way to sea trials. It feels like a major accomplishment. It's amazing that we're building something that's gonna protect and serve for years to come. 
In June, another special day as papers were signed officially delivering the Warner to the U.S. Navy. Thanks to the dedication and teamwork of shipbuilders, the submarine was delivered over two months ahead of schedule. John Warner gets to carry the, the flag as the best VCS submarine ever delivered out of the shipbuilding. We all ought to be proud of that. It was tough. The crew came through. We got you ready. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of what we did together. And, and the John Warner, it's a special boat. It will always be a special boat. We set the standard and we're going to keep that standard. The Warner is the first Virginia-class submarine to be named for a person, former Secretary of the Navy and Virginia Senator John Warner. He and his wife, ship sponsor Jeannie Warner, were involved every step of the way as shipbuilders constructed the world's most technologically advanced submarine. Take pride in understanding how you are preserving freedom for our nation and for other nations for the future ahead in this ever more dangerous world in which we live. From the traditional keel laying in March of 2013 to its structural milestone of pressure hull complete in April of 2014 to a spectacular christening last fall, John Warner, the man and machine, have been celebrated with fanfare and fireworks and the traditional smashing of a bottle of American sparkling wine across the bow of the boat. <laughs> Now the Warner is ready to do its job of protecting our shores and ensuring freedom for Americans everywhere. For Focus NNS, I'm Casey Fletcher. Back to you, Brian. Thank you, Casey, and great job this summer. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Focus NNS, but make sure you check out all the latest news in our weekly publication, Currents, and in the latest edition of Yardlines. And if you want to be a guest correspondent or have a story idea for Focus NNS, Email us at focusnns at hii-nns.com. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Moore.